We're going to talk about the uh, John Deere Seed Star 2 monitoring. Uh, this one here is going to be with a variable rate drive. Uh, keep in mind we have several videos on different versions, you know, depending if you have XP or you have row command or it's just a ground drive planner. You know, each one of these isn't going to have everything that is going to pertain to your particular planner. You might have to watch several different videos to get everything out. This one here is going to be pertaining to nothing but the variable rate drive part of the planner and the monitoring of it. So with that, we're going to be doing this on a simulator that John Deere has in it. For the most part, it does a really good job. There's a few things in here that aren't quite functional, but it will get us through and show you what you need to know for the variable rate drive part of the planner. Okay, we get down to a variable rate drive planner. On the home screen, we're going to notice just a few different things. You know, we've got a quick start button up here, and we've also got a rotate meters right here. Another thing, and it's not really going to look any different than what you've got on your ground drive, but right on here, I've got target rate. If I push this target rate icon, I'm going to come up with my diff different ones that I can grab and just grab that one as I'm going through the field and change my rate just like that. One thing you might notice is some of these pages might be just a little bit different than what's on yours. For instance, I know this one right here. Some of them, it's just a toggle button up there that you can go and toggle through the different rates on the go. You know, and, and that's all because of just different software changes they've made as they've gone through time, you know, in the planners. And it's something that if you want it changed, it can be put into your, into the earlier planners to make it look like these screens here. So with that, we'll move on just a little bit. Quick start. I've got a quick start reset there, but just a few words about a quick start on a planner itself. Uh, the variable rate drive, you know, because of different things, they've got safety built into it. You know, there's always going to be a little bit of a skip when you drop that planner down and you take off. There's going to be a little hesitation in there. And the reason for that is, you know, if they ran it off of just radar, and they were looking at radar, and as soon as it sees radar speed, they could make it to where it starts turning just that quick, and you'd think life would be a little better. But the reason they didn't is liability reasons that if, for some reason, you've got a radar to gun going bad and you're sitting still on the end, and you know it's showing speed on and off at different times, you're back there working on something, you got the hydraulics kicked in, you got your hand in there, all of a sudden it's going to run it through a chain or whatever be the case. So that's kind of the reason, you know, the, the variable rate drive does have that characteristic to, to skip a little bit. What it needs to get the variable rate drive to work is about three things. We've got to see speed from our radar, number one. There's also an indicator. It's not a speed indicator on the planner, but you'll see a sensor on one of the main frame wheels kind of a speed sensor in there, a little tone wheel. And what that is, it's just saying active or not. Is the planner moving? If it's moving, I've got speed of one and a half mile an hour on my radar gun, and I've had it for a half a second. It's going to let things start turning. It's going to come instantly start turning that drill shaft at 14 RPM and then bring it on up to rate whatever it needs within just a, a second or so. So that's kind of the reason why there is a little bit of a skip on a variable rate planner. I guess the best thing I can tell you, if, if you're not running like a row command, you know, you'd normally just drop it in the ground before you get to that headland. Um, with a variable rate drive, if you don't want to have that skip, you know, you're going to basically drop it down just a little bit before that headland and then take off. And you'll have to check to see what it takes to eliminate that skip. But a normal skip, on a variable rate planner is probably three to five feet maybe can be as much as that you know if you're just going to stop and take off um, the quick start this is a quick start reset what quick start is about as soon as i lower that planner and the height switch sees that the planner is lowered you're going to see it start counting down time in here and i believe it starts at six seconds and it's going to count down to zero if i take off in that time i'm still going to end up with that three to five foot skip you know, but it, it releases things a lot quicker. If this quick start, say we, we come up to the end and I lower that planner and I sit there for 10, 15, 20 seconds and then I take off, the quick start is disabled at that time. It's not active. So I could have as much as a 12 or a 15 foot skip at that time. 
So if you're lowering the planter and you're not seeing a, a countdown in time going on here, what we need to do is go into planter configuration over here, letter G. And then we're going to go into drives right here on this tab. And then right here, we got drive configuration in the window. Then we're going to hit the uh, settings button down here. And then right here, we want to make sure we've got a check mark in the quick start there. So that's just a little bit about the quick start. So like I say, you're, you're sitting on the end, you had to plan her down, and you, this time counted off and you didn't get going, is all we have to do is click on that button one more time. I've got six more seconds to get going again to where I end up with that minimal skip. The other tab we've seen in here was was the rotate meters. If you had a ground drive planner, you know that the first time you start it up, you turn the vacuum fans on, seed discs are all empty, you've got to go back there and either turn the drive mechanism of the planter to get to discharged or put it in the ground and go and you're going to have a, a big old skip there too. Well, with a variable rate drive planter, what we can do is we can push on this and it's going to tell us to make sure we have the planter all the way up in the raised position. Each time I click the tab down here, it's going to rotate the meters approximately a half a turn. So I can push that two or three times and I'm going to see seed coming out of the seed tubes, dropping onto the ground, and I know I've got my meters charged at that time. One other thing on a variable rate drive planter is uh, we've got the rates up here, and in there we can just push on this rate button and I can pick to which one I want and I can change that rate on the go. For setting up of the population rates, we just go over here to soft key letter H, and in there we've got basically for starting up a crop we're going to want to come in here and make sure we grab the right the right crop in here I'll just leave it on corn now we're going to want to make sure we got disc type whether you know what whether it's a, a corn disc a, a soybean disc whatever it is of course we're going to be using a corn disc I would think on corn but one of the important things we want to look at is right down here we've got our seed disc Promax 40 or do you have a standard disc if you got a normally it's going to default to a standard disc in there and if you don't change that over to Promax 40 we got 30 cells versus 40 cells it's looking at what it needs to have for a drill shaft speed to get the population we need but it needs to know what disc we've got in there so we want to make sure we got the right seed disc in there okay another thing we've got up here then when we go to set and rates we've got show rates so we'll just click on that. Then we've got our change rates button. So at any rate, we'll just go up to rate number one. And we've got, just like on a ground drive, we've got a target rate, we've got a high and a low. Our target rate, if we type something in there, whatever we're going to put, I'll go ahead and change it. But take note, our high and low limits are in there. When I go ahead and type in, I'll type 36,000 in there. Hit accept you'll see it changed my high and low limits. So that's something that if that limit isn't suiting you, it's not working the way you need, we can actually go in there and change those too if we wanted to. So one other thing to mention in here, if we're going to do any variable rate planning, the only, the only uh, rate that is going to work, number six, is designated to be for a prescription. So you're going to go into six and you'll you'll do the prescription in there. You'll go into your your documentation page and you'll pick your prescription that you're going to use. But we need to make sure rates one, two, three, four, five are all turned off. We can't have any of these others turned on. It's going to have more than one rate setting in front of it. It's not going to want to know what to do. It's not going to plant for you. So if you're using prescriptions, number six is the only one turned on. Rates one through five are all turned off. So with that, we'll just accept. And one other thing I guess to show you in here, this population adjust down below. What that amounts to on corn, the planters are pretty accurate. They're pretty much counting every seed there is out there. When we get into beans and we're running, say, maybe 170,000 seeds to the acre, a lot of times you're going to see that it's it's not reading enough. You know, maybe it's instead of reading 160, it's reading 142 or something. But then if I slow my planner down, 
then now all of a sudden I'm planting all my seed. You know, it's showing that 175 on there. So what we've got right in here is a population adjust. If I go in here, say I was 6% off on my seed, you know, of what it was actually counting, I would go in here and I'd put a 1.06, and that's going to put an extra 6% onto it. So now when I slow down, instead of reading, you know, I slow down to 2 mile an hour, instead of it reading that 175, it's going to be reading 190 or whatever it is, 6% extra. But when I get up to my normal planting speed, then it's going to be reading right. It's going to have the correct population, you know, on our actual population over here is going to be reading what it should. So just keep in mind that for the most part, you know, on corn, you're not ever going to have to change that. Beans, most likely going to have to change. So with that, I think that kind of sums up the biggest share of the variable rate drive planner. If you guys got any questions, make sure you get a hold of us and we'll get them answered for you.